right, well, uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming out for this. I, I appreciate, I already appreciate you being here and your thoughts and comments already. Um, so we're, we're very interested in, in hearing from you. Uh, so uh, because we are recording this conversation, um, it's, uh, it's set up in a slightly more formal way because um, we want to make sure that we capture all the comments and the video um, recorder doesn't, um, like, the, well, I should really say this microphone doesn't go out there very well. Um, so we might just have you, you know, if when it comes to the comment time, um, just have you come up here. But just so you know the format of um, what is going to happen tonight, um, oh, I'm going to, uh, oh, sure, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We can, do you know how to do that? Okay, uh, so I'm just going to give a quick background on sort of what passed and what, what didn't pass, and uh, then we're going to, uh, I'm going to hand the mic over to Kate, who is our uh, chair of the Energy Advisory Committee, um, to get sort of her context for this as well, um, and then Richard Fazy, who's here from Energy Futures Group, um, has, has um, been working with us on this, um, it's going to uh, give us a little bit of the background on like how this has um, worked in other um, parts of the country and in other countries too, uh, and uh, and then uh, we're hoping to save a good chunk of time for your comments. Um, so and I, I'll be uh, writing them all down and hopefully capturing them because we want to uh, make sure that we're um, you know um, capture you know like hearing them. Um, so uh, that's th so that's uh, uh, sort of the the broad uh, overview of what's going to happen. Um, uh, we uh, there's not a ton of us here right now, so I think we could potentially just do a quick round of like, hi, my name is, and um, we don't think we need to go up to the mic for this, but um, just if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, that'd be that'd be great. Um, so I'll start. My name is uh, Ann Watson. I'm the the mayor and. Um, so glad you all are here. Kate Stevenson, again, chair of the Energy Advisory Committee. Uh, Richard Fazy with Energy Futures Group. Uh, Lori Holt, I grew up in Montpelier. And, and see, I haven't, I haven't done the math, but I've easily spent the bulk of my adult life here. Fair enough. As a realtor broker. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, Alex Aldrich with Polo Banker Classic Properties. Dan Jones from the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. Diana Chase, I'm also on the Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee. Donna Barola Casey, I'm brand new to city government here in Montpelier. Um, right now I'm the interim um, assistant city manager and the interim Department of Public Works director. <laughs> and we'll see where we go from here. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> when, yep. yep, once we get to the, so we, we were just doing introductions and uh, those will not be a part of the recording because you weren't here up at the mic, but um, when we get to the part where we, you know, are hoping to get your comments, hey, um, then uh, we'll, we'll ask you to, to come up and use the microphone. So we've, we've got that on the recording. Um, okay, so just for some context, so Montpelier does have a goal to reach net zero energy uh, by uh, 2030 for city operations uh, and uh, 2050 for the, the community at large. And really what that means is that um, the hope is that we can be uh, generating renewably as much energy as we're consuming. Uh, and so that's, the, the, especially for the city operations, is a pretty ambitious goal. And, and I think even for the, the uh, residential and commercial um, uh, 
aspects of Montpelier, that's also still pretty ambitious. Um, and so it's going to take some some thought and some planning. And you know, this is one um, one thing that we had um, considered. Um, and so to that end, uh, there was a charter amendment that we um, that did pass um, back. Uh, gosh, last town meeting day. Um, now, just to be clear, what passed uh, the public was quite broad um, and had some provisions for um, requiring energy efficiency um, minimums in buildings, in existing buildings. And that I just want to be clear that that did not pass the legislature. Um, so that's, uh, I want to make sure that you all know that we're not talking about that. Um, and But what did pass was the um, possibility of um, doing an um, energy efficiency um, disclosure of information at the time of listing for sale um, for existing um, properties, commercial and residential. Um, and so um, uh, moving forward from that, uh, we are interested in having this conversation um, about um, how this could look or potentially um, you know, what we should be considering or what's uh, 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 what are the uh, what are our, our fears with this, or what are the the concerns or hopes or um, any of the above? Is, it's all welcome. So um, anyway, so we'll, for any further context, I'm going to pass this over to Kate. I just wanted to say a few things about the the Montpelier Energy Advisory Committee. Um, we we're a group of volunteers. There are about 15 folks on the committee, and our mandate is really to advise City Council on anything energy related that's for the city. So again, totally advisory in, in capacity, um, but a lot of what we've been working on as a group are things like um, measuring the city's municipal energy use, um, outreach to citizens to help inform folks about energy efficiency opportunities. Um, so we kind of work working at the municipal level. We're also working you know, at the community level. We're currently working with uh, uh, landlords to help um, increase efficiency of multifamily buildings. Um, and so this energy efficiency ordinance conversation really um, kind of fits in with a larger planning process that we have underway. And um, for all of you who are Montpelier residents, you know that there, um, there's a city plan, formerly known as the master plan, but that needs to get updated every um, five yeah. years. Yeah. Um, and so that process is in progress, um, and we are, you know, all the different committees of the city are responsible for helping to draft different chapters of that plan. So we're working on the energy chapter, um, and within that, we, we look at things like what's the, you know, number of homes that have been weatherized in the city of Montpelier, and then set a 10-year goal for what we, you know, what we think that will look like in 2030, and then also we're looking at 2050 goals as well, as Anne said. So, um, you know, part of that goal setting process is also identifying what are specific initiatives that the city could take, both on a policy level and an outreach level, um, to help us reach those goals. And so, um, this idea of an energy efficiency time of sale disclosure was one of the ideas that we've been talking about for for a few years, really, um, to the point of bringing it to the vote in November and then um, to through the, the charter change process. Um, but I think, as Anne said, like, we don't really know what this looks like yet. And that's why we are trying to engage in this process of getting feedback and researching, which Richard will speak to, researching kind of what the possibilities might, might be. Um, and then our role as the Energy Advisory Committee is, I think, to come back and make some recommendations to City Council as to actual ordinances and ordinance language. So that's, that's all I have. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess resources to help home buyers. You know, we also see ourselves as a kind of educational information gathering and information sharing resource. So part of what we are doing is tabling at the farmer's market and sh having lectures and events that help educate folks as to um, you know, how they can help implement these ideas in their homes and businesses. But. All right, Richard. Great, thank you. Um, so as uh, the mayor and Kate indicated, I'm Richard Fazy. I live in Starksboro. I don't live in Montpelier. Um, but I've been uh, helping, the, helping the city here um, think through and consider what the options are for uh, moving forward with uh, um, 
time of listing energy, uh, energy ordinance. Um, I've been working on this for a while in Vermont and, um, and had, a, had a grant from a, another organization that, that allows me to spend some time um, supporting the city. So, um, so I've been here uh, helping, helping move this forward. So I'm going to provide a little bit of background and context and sorry for those of you who have heard this previously. Um, some of this will be, um, uh, uh, we'll, you'll, you'll, I'll be repeating it, but um, hopefully it will provide some, uh, some context for everybody. Um, so why are we doing this? Why, is, why does this make sense? Well, there's this, um, the, the, the theory behind making energy information at the, at the time of sale is, is one that, that sort of uh, is picked up by, by this cycle here. So uh, if, you, if you start at, the, at, uh, at, at midnight and, and, and go around clockwise, if the owner discloses energy information of the, of the property, um, that fully informs buyers or, or renters uh, about, about what's in that, that property that they're either um, buying or, or renting. Uh, we're, we're talking here specifically about, about sale, but this, this concept holds true for rental properties as well, too. Um, by making this information uh, available, people have choices um, and will favor efficient properties. Um, it's really leveraging the market and the power of information that the, the market can provide. Um, so the, the market would, in, in theory, value um, more efficient properties. Um, owners would, um, in order to, to sell their property either quicker or for, for more information. If this information is made available, um, owners would invest in those properties if they know that they could get their money back and, and, um, and get a return on, on that investment. And so, and so, um, and then making that available in the, the, the market will, will see that the next time and, and the market pressures will, will help to improve the properties uh, just through making information available. So that's, that's the theory, that's the theory behind it. Um, and um, we've been, as I mentioned, we've been working at this for a while in, uh, in Vermont, um, trying to figure out how to take something that's really sort of invisible and put it, uh, put it in front of people at the, at the right time um, so that people can make good choices and so that people are, are motivated for, to, um, uh, to invest in, and improve the energy efficiency of their property. So um, we've really, we've been rating new construction since 1987 in Vermont. And, and so we have um, what was originally energy rated homes. It's now, um, uh, it's, it's now a home energy rating system. So anytime about uh, a third or half of all new homes in Vermont go through a, uh, a rating system and that in information is, is made available and, and disclosed. Um, but beyond that as well too, there have been a number of efforts underway in uh, that, that started in 2000, the mid, mid early 2011. Uh, the governor named a disclosure working group. There was a couple acts um, that went that didn't didn't make it forward through the legislative process, and so uh, and it's been come up in a number of plans from the from the, um, the at the state level. Uh, uh, so things uh, have been percolating along too. At the same time, there have been a pilot program that was done. Uh, Efficiency Vermont and uh, worked with New Hampshire and, and did uh, 250 home energy scores in Vermont, uh, for Vermont homes on a sort of a pilot basis as well. Um, and have been working, um, working with the market players, with the realtors and the lenders and others to try to figure out how this, how this works throughout the state of Vermont. So um, this effort in, in Montpelier is one that's, uh, that's sort of building on some of the information in the past and trying to figure out how to put these pieces together and, um, and make this information available so that we can, uh, we can uh, leverage markets and, and make them work. Um, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but we know that having information available, uh, it's, it's, it's helpful in, in many things. Buying appliances, buying cars, people don't make a decision solely on miles per gallon, but, um, but I think that we all expect that this information should be available and, and be part of the consideration of of, um, of which vehicle which, which vehicle we might buy um, so there are um, there there are um, as well we've been looking at this or other jurisdictions that have that have put this in uh, this energy information in place and the evidence there is that it it doesn't necessarily kill a sale uh, which is one of the uh, contentions out there so but it's an opportunity to reward uh, investments and and what people have put into properies um, so in addition to making this information available 
Um, there have been some studies that have been done uh, around the world, uh, the Europeans have been doing this for a while, that actually shows that having this information when a home changes hands, um, having that information available encourages people to make energy improvements in the property. So typically somebody's going to, when they buy a, an existing home, they'll do a, a, some sort of remodel or upgrade or something within the next, within the first six months or a year or so. Having some information available around energy and knowing that this is going to be part of the, uh, the, the process, the sale process coming down the road, people are more likely to make an investment in that property. So there's some examples here of the, of the portion of buyers that are influenced by rating or disclosure reports and the percentage of those who actually make recommendations when they're making renovations to those homes. So, um, uh, so th that's part of it as well too. So this is not anything new. This has been happening in Europe since uh, 1997. Um, and and, um, and the, most of the, I think all of the European countries actually have some, forward of, some form of uh, time of sale or time of listing disclosure um, in place. In the United States, uh, this has been happening since the um, since 2007 as well uh, as well too. Um, right now, this is what it looks like as of June of this year. There are uh, there are a number of uh, number of states and and cities that have some form form of uh, energy disclosure policy that that's that's in place. So um, th we're we're not we're not out there leading the the charge on this here in Montpelier. There's evidence. There's experience. And we would be borrowing from some of that from some of these other states and municipalities as well. Um, as well, the Department of Energy has done a number of studies looking at this and, and, and really sort of looking at uh, the impact that energy efficiency has had on the, on the real estate market. Uh, one that I, th I think is, is particularly interesting is Chicago, that homes that disclose energy costs sold 20 days faster. Uh, there was also some evidence there that they sold, they sold for more as well, too. So, um, this information does, does help influence markets. Um, just to sort of pull, to pull together what some of the benefits would be for, for Montpelier buyers and sellers, uh, this would really help protect and reward investments uh, that somebody's made in their home for, for upgrading energy efficiency or putting solar in their home by, by making this information available. It would help the market to better value efficient homes with, with transparency. Um, there, there are increasingly opportunities to roll uh, improvement costs into the mortgage. Uh, more and more uh, lenders are offering green and energy efficient financing programs. So with, with this being made available, this information made available, people will, will um, more likely take advantage of some of these um, l financing opportunities. And really this is a consumer protection uh, opportunity for helping buyers know what they're, what they're getting into. So um, with, with that uh, sort of as, as background, I just want to sort of walk through some of the, some of the elements that we're considering. And, and at this point in time, nothing, nothing is a done deal. Um, but there are, some, uh, there are some pieces that we're looking at and thought it would be helpful to share those and, and then let people react to, um, to, to what, what's on the table. Um, so the, the mayor talked about... Um, uh, what what's sort of driving this effort? So this is the this is the um, the language that was passed by the legislature and, and is is now became part of uh, the city charter once the governor signed it um, er earlier this summer. So regulation and enforcement of energy efficiency disclosure requirements for existing and new commercial and residential properties at the time of properties listed for sale. So this is quite a bit broader than what we're talking about. This includes. New, construct, new construction, as well as existing commercial and residential, we're, we're starting um, with existing, proper, existing residential properties, even though this ordinance would allow a broader effort. But um, it, it, it seems to make sense to, to start with a particular market segment and figure that out and, and, um, before, before taking a too big, big a bite of the apple. Um, so some of the options that we're considering are, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, and I'm sure you'll have some questions as well too. Um, there's a Vermont Home Energy Profile, which is a, um, which is a, uh, a home energy label that sort of summarizes the key features of a home and provides some, some um, bottom line information. Um, so a way to convey this information in a, in a consistent, uniform, and uh, straightforward, simple way to, to, um, to buyers and, and, and for sellers as well. Um, 
We're talking, uh, considering generating this through what's called an automated energy model. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we've also looked at, and many of the other jurisdictions actually have an energy auditor come in um, as part of their disclosure requirements and provide a home energy score, which is a Department of Energy um, uh, labeling system, um, and an energy audit. But we've, we've sort of put that aside because that, that, that does add some costs and it does potentially um, have a time consideration. And so uh, in the interest of, of having something that's basically Efficiency Vermont uh, has, has suggested that they could provide this automated energy model for free and it could be done by the seller or the realtor um, or, or somebody involved with the home sale. Um, so it would, it would take care, it, it would take care of the, the cost and the time considerations that, that we've heard have, that have been uh, issues. Um, there's, uh, there's also an, another piece of legislation that, that passed uh, this, this session, Act 62, which called for the, uh, the, the reformation of some working groups that have been meeting over the past number of years um, there's a residential building energy labeling working group and a commercial and multifamily building energy labeling working group. So this is a, an effort that's sort of happening in parallel outside of Montpelier, um, but they'll be talking about are there some building energy labeling systems that make sense for the, uh, for the state of Vermont that, that Montpelier could, could tap into. It makes so, no sense for Montpelier to have a system here and Burlington to have their own and Brattleboro to have theirs. St. John's ready to have theirs. If there's a statewide system that, that works, that, that there's consensus from the stakeholders, um, and the, these are um, stakeholder working groups that, that are named in this legislation, that would make life easier for us to, to um, uh, sort of hitch our wagons to those. Um, and then as well, we, you know, we, we certainly want to hear from the stakeholders people here today, and this, this won't be the end of the conversation either. I think you'll hear the the, the mayor indicating that too, because there, there'll be, as the ideas get fleshed out, there'll be other, uh, other opportunities for city council and for the public to, to chime in also. Um, so this is the front and the back side. I know you, 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 can't, you can't see it uh, very well here, but, um, and I'm assuming this, this, this will be up, well, we can put this PowerPoint up on the website. Maybe it was up there on the city, city council website, so you can look at it in more detail. But this is the, Vermont Home Energy Profile that came out of the pilot program that was run a couple years ago and has sort of been tweaked and adjusted. But this is what what's, um, we're considering at, at this point in time. So the, the back side has a, a number of definitions and resources to follow up on, but the front side, the left side here, uh, has some sort of three main uh, areas that it, that it focuses on. Um, the, the, the it has total uh, dollar energy cost per year. So that'd be for heating, hot water, heating, cooling, hot water, lights, and appliances. So all the energy costs that are in a building would get pulled, pulled together and provided in terms of dollars per year. So that's the, really the, the disclosure that, that we feel is, uh, is, is the bottom line going to be most important to people to know what they're getting into um, and what it's going to cost to live in a property. And then the, the wedge that's next to it provides um, a comparison of, of that property against other um, properties of the same size. So um, the, the highest energy use would be that same, that same home with no, in, with no insulation in it, a very inefficient home. The, the, the green uh, point on the left would be the amount of energy that that home uses that would be very well insulated and very high efficient equipment um, in it. Uh, a very tight building as well too. So, and then it provides a comparison for the for the home that's being rated, and in comparison to those to those um, different endpoints. And then it breaks down the home energy. I'm just a little tongue surprised. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Unless people want to talk about kind of critical piece. Okay. Well, we can talk about carry on. Okay. Okay. Make sure we have time. Yeah. Okay. So there's and then it breaks down the energy costs. If there are achievements to the house, if somebody participated in a program or, or put solar panels on the roof, those things will be highlighted there. And then the bottom section is take action. What are the opportunities uh, in this house based on what's there for, for moving forward? Um, so with that, uh, this would be generated uh, through a uh, automated energy model. And I'm not going to go through this in detail. I have got a number of slides here. If you've got questions, we can talk about it. But it was essentially this. Uh, this is being um, developed and, and piloted by Efficiency Vermont and, and Clearly Energy that's done a couple million of these for, uh, for real estate portals around the, around the country. But it will pull 
information from the uh, property database to generate the characteristics of, of a home. Um, and, and then it allows you, uh, there are, uh, as, as the seller or the realtor or the home inspector, whoever is going to fill this out for, for a property, you can then go in and update the information that, that it, it, it comes up with. So it'll pull from this, the statewide, uh, the, the Montpelier database, and then you can, if you if put in a new Energy Star refrigerator, you can select that, or you've put in LED lighting throughout, you can update that as well too. So this has the ability to, to take what was automated and then update it for your particular situation based, based on information that you have. Um, so that, uh, th these are some examples of, of what the impact would, would be there too. There, there, there are a number of pieces of information this pulls from as well. Um, not only would it pull from the Montpelier database, but if a home had solar on it, all of the solar systems in the state are in a database that the Public Utilities Commission holds. It would pull that solar information accurately from there and, and, um, and put it uh, in, into the system. If, if it had gone through a program at Efficiency Vermont, um, it would pull from that database as well, too. So the, all the available information that sort of builds on the characteristics of the house that are in the property, uh, the, 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 the cities. I'm not saying the proper terminology. It's the, the property database, the ta property tax database. I'm not even quite sure exactly what what is what is what the proper name is. But it, it has the characteristics of the house in terms of age, size, fuel use, that sort of thing that's there. And then these, um, and then pulled from Efficiency of Vermont and the public utility database, it would it would generate that home home energy profile. Uh, this is the same information that that flows into the multiple listing service as well. Um, so, um, we've talked about, about this, it's, um, it, th this, would, this would be, um, I, I think if people have some suggestions around this, there's been a lot of thinking, but, but certainly what, what is the information that gets conveyed would, was, is going to be useful. And, and with that, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, we, we, did, we did have some discussion questions we put, put forward as well too, but but maybe, maybe what we do is, um, if, if there's any clarification questions, maybe we'll start, start there. And then, and then Anne will lead a, a conversation. Yes. Which? Great. Yes. Okay. I generated this list of questions um, uh, in hopes to uh, just get people thinking about it in a variety of ways. Um, I would add to this list of questions. Um, are there things that we should be asking um, places that have done this sort of thing um, uh, elsewhere? What what kinds of things should we should we be asking? Should we be finding out? Um, are th and also. Um, I think it's fair to put up there like what are our hopes and or fears about this and um, yeah, open to open to suggestions and advice. So I guess I would add that to that. Is that is that helpful? Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so as Richard said, um, if uh, if it's uh, I think we could start with some clarifying questions. Are there things you'd like to uh, details you'd like to know more about, um, and then um, then we'll. Um, frame a, a discussion. But for now, clarifying questions. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if you don't mind. <laughs> you can also pick it up out of the thing. Thanks. I'm Alex Aldrich. I'm with Coldwell Baker Classic Properties. My wife is my broker, and she told me I could come down here if I promised not to say anything. So <laughs> here I am. Um, uh, you, you mentioned early on, uh, this is a clarifying question. Um, that s at, at some point during the sale, someone would pay for this. And you mentioned either the seller or realtors would pay for it. Did I hear that correctly? Um. <laughs> yeah. um, in, other, in other markets, that's what's, what's happen, is happening. 
Um, here, Efficiency Vermont has, um, at least initially, they, they haven't said for how long, for at least a couple years, they will cover the costs um, of, of providing this. So, um, and, and, and thereafter, my, the indications that, that we've heard from uh, the developer of this automated energy model is it, it costs something like 15 or 20, 30 dollars to, to actually um, to, to run the, the software. So um, my, you know, Efficiency Vermont has some resources, certainly uh, I would say plenty to, to cover that. Um, I think that they want to hold, hold their options out if there, if there are a lot of these that get generated throughout Vermont. At this point in time, it's really just Montpelier at, that's having this conversation now. I know Burlington is considering something as well, too. But it, so th to answer your question directly, uh, no cost for at least a couple years. Thank you. Other clarifying questions? Yeah. I have uh, more thoughts about this, and there's probably time to uh, allow to express it. Um, I think one, I'm sorry, <laughs> what, one thing I want to mention, I've heard a number of people are realtors. My uh, own professional background has been uh, legislative council staff and other places in government developing policy and workable programs that are going to actually do what they purport to, to do. And so a good deal of my, frank, frankly, criticism of the idea stems from that experience. And um, then there are other things that enter into it. Um, I'm not, not even quite sure wh wh where to start, except that I think one fundamental thing that seems to not be acknowledged at all is that uh, there has been point made that this this proposal would affect the price of buildings and would affect the amount of money that somebody gets from when they sell their house. I mean, I think it's it's inevitable that it will go, it's going to have a financial effect, and particularly if Montpelier is being viewed as the guinea pig for this, it is a simply you got to say this is not. I don't feel, as a, as a Montpelier homeowner, that I particularly want to be a guinea pig, particularly when, uh, you know, I'm an old man, I might die before I get out of my house, but there's a chance I might want to sell it. And I don't particularly want to take whatever the loss or the gain would be, I know what it's worth now, and experience something that could be negative when everybody else in my shoes in the state is not. That, that's one point. Actually, I'm going to jot that down if that's okay. Okay. Um, another point, I had not known about this automated thing, but I got to say I'm really suspicious or dubious about that. And when, when the point was first made that this was analogous to the miles per gallon sticker on the car up in the, at the uh, auto dealer, I thought, well, that's just baloney. You're talking about a brand new, comparatively simple system, a car, that is basically the same technologies of all the other cars that are on the market. You're not doing it to use cars. It's a national system. It's been tested by all kinds of engineers. And it's one factor. Anybody who, accurate. pardon me? It's not even accurate. And it's not accurate. <laughs> you, can, you can fudge it. And so, as we know with VW. And so, you know, when I think about Montpelier houses, which I know something about, over half of our housing stock is old. And, you know, I think it's true to say that every one of those buildings is unique. Um, I know that I've had my, I've had my house almost 50 years, and I've done any number of energy improvement efforts over the years, which are now probably mostly antiquated. But I think that's probably true for most people. I, I give, I think Montpelier's homeowners are really the 
biggest asset that this community's got. If you look around, it's not historic preservation, it's not zoning, it's not anything else. It's the people who have invested their lives and their major financial commitment to that property. And I think it's uh, got to be the case that practically everybody who's got their, you know, who's, who's awake is going to be investing in energy improvement for a long time. Which, I, I'm, that's a little off the point, but, it, but the point I'm wanting to make is that I think there's a bit of a, of a presumption that this is really a key problem. You know, and the way I think of it as a, a government analyst is that you've got problems which are ones that individual parties are most suited and most motivated to cure on their own. You've got other problems that they are not capable of dealing with. We call those things public goods, highways, the military, whatever. And it seems to me that in the terms of the city wanting to have the net zero business actually accomplished, our efforts would be better spent looking at how we could actually get rid of the fossil fuel consumption that we do where there's not the potential for very many people individually to take care of that on their own. Whereas I think the energy efficiency is something that they can take care of on their own. But let me just make a couple other points. I don't want to just, I don't want to go on and on here. That's okay. You're, but you're doing great. And there's not a, a ton of us, so I think it's going to tell. All right. But, but there are a couple other key points, I think, from just a policy point of view. And that is, I really don't trust the automated concept. I think having assuming that this is going to be done. Um, it seems to me that it's such a complex problem that you really do need to have individuals who are well-trained and who know the differences between all the variations that they're going to find. And um, relying on a computer model somewhere to, for example, take account of most of the houses, the old houses in Montpelier have got fieldstone foundations. Energy efficiency says that is a condition which you need to cure from an efficiency point of view by putting insulation over it in the basement on the inside. And I think if you ask any old timer about that, they're going to tell you that's the worst thing you could do if you want to prevent frost from heaving those stones and wrecking your foundation. Yet. I just had a conversation about this. With, yep. With um, back from the capstone. Anyway, we can talk later. So is I, am I wrong about that? Apparently there are ways that you can insulate field stone foundations. Outside. Well, yeah, you do it on the outside. Right. That's anyway, how I'm anybody, well, I mean, that's a precisely the point. You do it on the inside as long as you don't do it all the way down. Yeah. Well, there you go. Anyway, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. Anyway, I, I mean, another thing with Efficiency Vermont that has bugged me for a long time is there was a period where they sent out a letter to homeowners every so often with, I, I was either good, bad, or medium, I suppose, in my, enter, my electrical use. And, you know, it was the stupidest statistical measure that I've ever seen. I mean, it, it completely ignores the notion that people u use electricity a multitude of ways and with different levels of use for the same things. And I worry that that's the kind of mentality that would come from particularly these comparisons, you know, home to home. And um, I, I guess the final thing I want to say, or, well, look, two things. One is that I think it's from a governmental point of view wrong to give a nonprofit entity whose job is primarily promoting energy use in the way that they would have you use it to be the ones who are going to be responsible for telling you what you need to do, not simply because you ask them and you can use the information or not, but, but because it's a regulation, a government regulation. Nonprofit groups ought not to be in the business of of, of an arm to, to regulation. And then I, the final thing I want to say, I guess, is that to me we've got 
a perfectly good, long-term, well-developed set of institutions about real estate transactions that are called the licensing process. Uh, we've got realtors, lawyers, appraisers, building inspectors, surveyors, financiers. They all have to be licensed. There's a whole series of aspects to the institution to assure that people are well trained, that they are competent, that they're being supervised properly, and if there are problems, you get a non-partial adjudication of it. And I wonder, in fact, how, what's a person who's not happy with one of these things that they get from energy efficiency going to do to try to get a fair hearing? And so I think that if this is going to go forward, first it needs to be a state program that involves the licensing procedure of similar to what all the other actors in the real estate market are about, and that it, uh, that, it, that it not presume that it can be all automated and done with a computer and an app on your phone. comments. Um, I think they're, they're really helpful to, to get, hear your perspective. Um, if, if the automated energy approach was not taken, but instead, um, I'm curious about your thoughts about if instead there was a professional yeah. accredited yes. individual, would that be That's desirable? That's exactly what I'm, what I'm suggesting. Okay. And there was a comment about this at the city council meeting last week. Use the mic. Oh, yeah, use the mic. Sorry. And uh, there was an individual present who is a licensed appraiser, and he made the observation, I'm not sure where this occurs, but that in that particular profession, they had branched out apparently someplace and included energy auditing as part of that. And that seems like a very reasonable way to do it. Thank you. I think we are. I think we're on to, to comment. So, Stand have up. at it. Okay. Yes. There you go. Okay. And if you don't mind, I'm going to jot down things down as you're talking. That's, That's fine. Okay. Um, I'm not going to apologize for the fact that I live in East Roxbury now, but I did own real estate in from in Montpelier up to 2013, I think. Um, oh, Lori Holt. I'm a real estate broker in Montpelier, so if we're being expected to help implement this, that's why I'm not feeling bad about living in Roxbury. Um, right now, the time of sale, the only requirement that Vermont has is that the sellers provide the adequate smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. And for years, I don't think it's a bad thing, but for years I, I've had trouble understanding why, why are they waiting if it's so important for a house to sell to try to get smoke detectors in everybody's houses. I mean, really, I don't understand why the two are joined at the hip like that. Um, and I guess my same comment would have to do with this idea. Um, I don't understand, if it's such a good thing, why you're waiting until a house sells to get involved with this. But, but, but also, you know, I'm not an advocate for this. I mean, I like the idea that the American dream is for people to own a home where it's safe for them to come home and just have peaceful enjoyment of it when they get there and not have some government body saying, you need to have it be energy efficient as well. I mean, I've been recycling to, you know, for a long time before it was mandated in places, but I just don't get why the government needs to get involved in people's decision to choose to make their homes energy efficient or not. I mean, it's obvious that insulated homes are cheaper to own. They're heat, they, they, they cost less to, and they're more comfortable, they're not drafty, but I just don't get this idea that at the time of sale, there's going to be this arbitrary computer-generated, I think I put it on the same 
the same scale as how accurate zestimates are, which they aren't, which they are not. Um, so I guess, I guess that's my point more for I don't understand why this is coming up at the time of sale anyway. And I, I don't think the realtor should be the ones involved in needing to make any of this happen, frankly. Uh, on Zillow.com, uh, if you go to Zillow.com, yeah. one of the okay, yeah, it, thank you. It, you just it it, it it assigns an arbitrary computer-generated figure, which is historically terribly inaccurate. It's pulling from the town records, to get assessment, so it's the same information. Cool. Thank you. That's it defines garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Yeah. Just gonna put that here. And I don't know where to start either. <laughs> Hello again. Um, just one thing in particular, which I'm not sure if you're aware of. We have forms. Oh, Martha Lang. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Before, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, can I grab my phone? Um, just to clarify from the previous comment, um, it's the um, uh, the language of the uh, charter amendment was actually about time of listing for sale rather than time of sale, if that makes any sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, fair enough. Thank you. It's not as old as my neighbor's houses. Um, it does have a foundation that is not rock, and I don't have, I'm on a shrinking fixed income, as many people my age are. We don't have the money to do all of this fun stuff and I, whatever this, I don't know, this plan or whatever sheet that tells you, you have to tell how much insulation's in your attic. I don't have an attic, so I don't much care. Um, and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, that's crazy. I do have, though, if the time comes to sell my house, I believe since day one, 25 years now, my electric usage, my heat usage, and what the city calls an excuse for a water usage, which is almost impossible to really track. Um, so it's something a lot of homeowners would probably do anyway, especially since we have computers. I mean, I'm an accountant, and I remember 12-column spreadsheets. And if you had to consolidate, you had to add 12 12-column 12 spreadsheets to get to the consolidated. Um, you got Excel now. You can just pop your numbers in there, put your formula in there, and you can do whatever you want. Um, I take my bills when I get them for electric. I don't do it every month, but I'll catch up here and there during the year and pop in kilowatt hours used and all the other information they give me. And same as the heat, when did I buy it, how much did I buy, and what cost me to buy it. And I'm always six or seven thousand dollars depending on the, or gallons depending on what time of year it is for the city, um, for this water and sewer. So I, you know, I, I don't think we need somebody to tell us our efficiency. I mean, we can calculate that when somebody, if somebody wants to sell my home if I'm still alive, I can tell them I rarely heat my home above 64 in the winter. Um, I do have air conditioners. This, this efficiency Vermont things that we used to get in the mail, I was the worst in the neighborhood. I, I was. I was in, the, in the summer, I was absolutely the lowest of the low as far as efficiency um, because I do have air conditioners in my windows. And my refrigerator's old. It's as old as it's 25 years old. I don't have the money to get the latest energy efficient, put the solar, put this. There are things I'd love to do if I had any money, but I don't. Um, so 
I just don't want to see this thing happen at all. I think, you know, I think we're getting way, way too governmental regulated as it is. And we don't, and I think the way it's proposed or the way I'm hearing it, it's ripe for things to not happen in a fair manner. Um, the people that don't have the money, have the older homes, are going to be treated considerably unfairly. The, um, the realtors are going to want to go for the houses with all the efficiency bells and whistles because they'll make more money and they'll make more commissions. The rest of us can go pound sand um, because we're just not quite with it. Um, so I don't know where all of this is coming from, but um, I don't agree with it at all. Thank you, Vicki. Um, something that we had talked about too, Vicki, previously was the potential for the city to provide some kind of incentives. Um, if it's not free. If it's not free, well, right, exactly. It doesn't, so. it doesn't, it doesn't do me any good yeah. I don't yeah. have the matching money. Yep, fair enough. Okay, great. So I can read my notes. Hi, uh, Peter Tucker. I'm a Montpelier resident and uh, a realtor as well. And I've been involved in this issue for several years. Um, and my notes, unfortunately, are a little bit random, but I'll try and okay. collect things as much as I can. Um, you know, I think we started a, a couple of years ago with the uh, with a, some kind of a disclosure system at the state level, and you know that bill eventually didn't pass. But what the Realtor Association did at that point in time was create a, a disclosure to buy from sellers to buyers um, to to inform buyers that you know there are reasons to be energy efficient, and if they want to explore that, uh, that that that's you know something that they should be aware of. Uh, same thing as a water test. Um, you know, radon, anything else that, that occurs along with building inspections. Um, so I think that, that that kind of opened the door. Uh, Martha indicated that we have, you know, an SPIR, seller's information report. Um, so, oh, sorry, yeah. And, and that really does, you know, provide a, a lot of information from the seller to potential buyers in terms of the cost of energy that they're using. Um, you know, this is the stuff that's in place right now, which has worked across the state, you know, for quite some period of time. Um, we made that improvement, even though it wasn't legislated to have that, that disclosure at the time, at the time of contract, essentially. Um, let's see. I think that, uh, that one of my concerns with the automated model, and I've got to say that, that quite honestly, I, I support the automated model because I seen the only other action as you know hiring an energy auditor to do a full-blown energy audit that is going to add significantly to the cost of, of actually putting your property on the market um, so you know I'm concerned about that but with the automated model you know it, what is the liability of the seller if he fills it out inaccurately um, you know on purpose or otherwise just because they don't know how much insulation is in their attic um, you know they run the risk of, of being sued, you know, saying, you know, it wasn't a proper disclosure. Um, just to skip a little bit, one thing that I can tell you with certainty, and, well, two things I wanted to say, and, and the first one is, you know, I know the, the most of the realtors that are sitting in the room right now, and we sell all kinds of property all the time. Um, we're not, we don't have the, the ability, we're not a big enough marketplace even in the entire state to pick and choose the kinds of properties that we represent. So, you know, regardless of, of the value of the property, um, there are realtors out there that are, you know, that will work, you know, on behalf of sellers. So I think it, that's, that's really important. Um, let's see. So S-118 was the, the bill that didn't pass. Um, at this point, you know, a lot of the due diligence is done on, on homes is done at the time of sale by the buyers performing building inspections and other tests that, that they, you know, they want. That's kind of the way things have worked. They want to have a water test. You know, the reason is so they confirm that the property meets their expectations, um, but also they're going to live there going forward. Um, you know, in terms of energy efficiency, you know, they're going to be the ones to benefit uh, as they go down the road. 
Um, so the whole mechanism of having the seller try to do some kind of efficiency disclosure at the time of listing um, does a couple of things. You know, one, it potentially uh, points out you know shortcomings to the seller's property, um, and it, it does you know run the risk that they won't get as much you know value out of the property. One of the other things that we've seen, and, and certainly you know, is potentially subject to change over time, are you know talking with appraisers. And you know, appraisers generally have said, you know, we don't add a lot of value, um, you know, for efficiencies that are in place. They're they're hard to quantify, unless somebody's had a, you know testing or you know just new windows done, something of that nature. Um, so, but but they have been slow, and appraisals are always looking backwards, so they're always going to react more slowly. Um, you know, to the marketplace, but it's very hard to say this property is worth more money because it has some type of efficiency associated with it. Uh, it just hasn't proven out yet. Um, and just to give you a, a, a handle on our market, you know, our, we have, uh, we've seen a couple of good years, the last couple of years, and, and I think if you look at grand lists and how grand lists are improving, uh, or property values are selling relative to grand lists, there's, there has been some progress. But, you know, where the economic expansion is now, I think, like 11 years, you know, the progress that we've seen in real estate values in Vermont has really just started to creep forward in the past couple of years. And so, you know, with whatever our future economics hold, um, you know, the potential to see things turn around and, and downturn slightly even, um, you know, we're just kind of catching up to, to everything. Um, I do like the, the energy model, the, the, the automated profile model, because I think that the alternative is going to be, you know, add $1,000 or so to the cost of, you know, of listing the property. Oh, oh okay. sorry. Get closer. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I do, but I, you know, I totally get the fact that, you know, it's, it's right with, you know, the chance of being missed, you know, not filled out correctly, kind of creating potential liability for, for the, um, for the you know for the the, the seller um, and one other thing you know I think you know as a state organization you know our recommendation to all of our realtors would be to not fill this out for somebody else we're not going to do that you know I mean we do an awful lot for folks but we can't assume that kind of responsibility um, you know and that's that's pretty clear in my mind um, I think that if this did go on and, and, you know, becomes a policy here in Montpelier, and then we do see subsequent uh, state uh, policies that are, that are different, um, you know, that I'd like to see Montpelier kind of on the front end saying, hey, we'd, we'd be willing to accept whatever the state standards are, even if they're not, you know, lined up or as stringent, potentially. Um, I would support the fact that, that uh, you don't include it, you know, or don't uh, have an energy auditor, you know, as, as part of this program. I, that's why I like the automated model, even though I see the great deficiencies of it. Um, I like the information like that Martha gives, you know, the information sheet that Martha gives out. You know, we certainly, as realtors, we can do a better job of that. I mean, Martha's on the forms committee. We make those decisions. Um, so, you know, having, having a better disclosure at the time of listing is certainly possible. And, and that's, I guess, to, to wrap this up, you know, you're, you're talking about a disclosure, and it can be as simple as that. It doesn't have to be something that's this, this, this complicated formula or an energy, a full-blown energy audit. It is a disclosure of what I know about my property at the time that I'm selling it. We do that now, you know, if we need to do it better or, you know, there are ways that we can do it better that are satisfactory to this group. I think we'd be wide open to that. Okay. That's about it. Before you leave it, um, and, and thank you. Thank you. And uh, with that too, um, I just want to make sure it's clear that if if I have not accurately captured your comments, I want to make sure that um, you know, please please let me know, and I'll I'll adjust it. So, thank you. I think it is incumbent on buyers to. Hang on, Vicki. Um, if sure. is there anybody who would like to speak who has not yet spoken? You can if you <laughs> never skip a chance. Yeah, no, fair yeah. enough. Go for it. <laughs> Tim Heaney, I'm a resident of Montpelier and real estate broker here too. Uh, yeah, I, I think just listening to all this, and we, we've had a few meetings now, and, and I think the concept of 
trying to create energy efficiency is, is a good goal for us all. It, the interesting piece is with this program, it's a, it seems punitive. It seems like at some level, it, people have been trying to get it together for a number of years at the state level. I know there's a few people in the room who've been in those meetings over the years with, you know, Richard and Peter have worked on it for a long time. And really the, the detail of it and how to, to work out all these questions is why it hasn't happened yet. There are really a lot of big questions to answer. How you evaluate efficiency of homes, who's going to do it, what's the cost? Um, and also, what level is it going to come in at? Is, you know, at one meeting it was mentioned, is it a marketable title issue? And that's a really big piece that can affect transactions. If two days before a closing you find out, gosh, there was, an, you know, the energy disclosure didn't happen and so we can't close. Well, somebody's moving truck is coming in from California and another couple's already moved out of their house. And, I mean, people's lives just go into a swirl when you create a marketable title issue. Um, and I'm not sure this should hit that level in, in the transaction. There are enough other key things that do uh, that are really critical. But, you know, you, you've got to pick your battles. And I think maybe this one shouldn't go to that level. Uh, I really like, I think Kate is it? mentioned in the very beginning creating incentives for uh, multifamily owners and for people to make their properties more energy efficient and I, I like that approach a lot I like the incentive approach rather than the punitive approach so if the focus goes that way um, I think it would be a really good direction for this so, thanks great thank you We've compared this program um, to other countries and other parts of our country. Um, I'm curious as to what form they use. It, it does it look like this? Is it something different? Um, it, I mean, if we're going to compare to their programs, kind of, yeah, right. yeah, that's great. That, yeah. Great yeah. question. Okay, thank you. And then I had also mentioned before about um, I don't know uh, of the people in charge who have houses in Montpelier, and at the last meeting it was suggested. Hey, run run your house through this and see what you think, yeah. and see what your gut tells you. And we're, we're definitely yeah. going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Nancy Lynch, I'll be very quick, and it's actually a follow up to Martha and Richard. It's it's sort of um, a question for you, actually. I tried to do after our last meeting, which I really appreciated the information that you you prepared and, and presented. And so I contacted the National Association of Realtors to find out what I could find out where they were, they were at at the national level. And this is just a little bit of information and I'm happy to work with you Great. and move forward and have these conversations. But what, um, what I found out was that, um, and I'm gonna just stick to this country. Within this country, so, and I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's just some information that we should all have mm -hmm. as we think about the fact that we actually are really cutting edge where we're sitting right here and what we're all think about doing. Um, so there are, if these are accurate, there are six localities in the country that are have done this. The two that you brought up at the meeting, Austin, Texas, and Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. There are four others. I didn't ask the names, but they're all municipalities. No states in the country have done this at all. And good or bad, there is absolutely no appetite, big surprise, at the federal level for this to happen. And so therefore, NAR has not taken a very, ha taken a strong position at all yet because they obviously work at the federal level and there's nothing on the table or anywhere in the future that they're seeing that the feds are gonna go. So I would just, um, I cited, um, I thank you very much for adding some of your citations. I noticed that you did that from the request from the last meeting and I can, I'm happy to take this offline, but I'd like, to have, I'd like to talk about where some of this information's coming from because when I spoke with the folks at NAR, um, their perspective was that there really are not any solid studies yet because not enough work has happened in this direction to clearly say with full confidence that this will improve the um, value of a home, this, let me use that broad term, please. Um, and I would just, this is sort of a personal liking to the fact that depending where you live, if your, background, if your backyard has a pool, it could be a positive. 
If your backyard has a pool somewhere else, it can be a negative. So I think we just, as we, as we all work together to try to come up with something that works for everybody and is in the best interest of Vermonters, I think it's just a, a nice little reminder for us and I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you further to right. figure out what do those forms look like? What is going on? But we just, nice to remind us all that it's really happening very local and there's gotta be some reasons why it's not happening state and federal. And so just, just thought I'd add that. Thank right. you for Thank your you. time. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Um, it is uh, incumbent on buyers to uh, do their due diligence just as they would do their due diligence when buying a car, buying a stock, buying whatever. Um, I think there's a big difference between Austin, Texas and Montpelier, Vermont. Montpelier's a small city. Everybody kind of knows everybody and um, this could become punitive. You may not intend it to be, but a few years down the road, it could. Um, I can see that happening easily, um, you know, in, in that context. Um, I still, I just don't think it's necessary to have this. Um, just have too many people that don't have the money to upgrade to everything that everybody thinks they should have, like let's keep up with so-and-so next door. Um, and I don't think anybody is against energy efficiency. I doubt very much if there's anybody that says, no, I'm going to go out there and use all the energy I can possibly use, and then some. Um, so I, you know, I just don't see that this is nece a necessary part of selling a house or listing a house. Um, you know, it's just not necessary. Hi there, I'm Dan Jones from Montpelier. Um, I've had an experience a couple of years ago when I went on the new lower interest rates to try and refinance my house and uh, had the experience where the um, appraiser that the bank wanted to send out, uh, although I had put a huge amount of energy work into the house specifically because it made it more comfortable, refused to give me credit for any of it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I found that as a uh, negative on the whole industry because it means that all the work that I have done on there does not then show up at, at the point that I may want to sell this. So having some kind of formal mechanism that allows for this to be recognized seems to me like a necessarily good idea and that a lot of us get stuck in the whole what's called business as usual framework. Now we know from a lot of uh, research that the climate is degrading rapidly. We also know in Vermont, 35 to 40 percent of our energy usage comes from oil for heating, uh, oil and propane from heating. It's a huge part of our pollution that we're putting out. And to have ways of controlling that is a necessary part of building a sustainable future in town. We seem to try and put everything back on the market. Oh, well, if the market doesn't do this or the market doesn't do that, we can't have any part of it because our role is merely to facilitate the market. The market has gotten us here. The market is going to take us elsewhere, and it's not going to be pretty. So I, will, for one, think that this is a hell of a good idea, and I'd like to even see it be stronger, but that's just me. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, make a comment apropos of what you just said, Dan, that obviously we really do need to deal with climate change. And the point that I was not very clear about that I wanted to make earlier is that I think the gain to be had from what additional home residential efficiency that can be had here, which is a desirable thing, is not anywhere near as urgent 
as getting us off all the fuels we use that, yeah, I mean, it's sort of like, what, duh, right? And so what, I, what I, my point here. But what am I missing? Well, what you're missing is that we are spending our time with this activity, which I'm, I'm suggesting has a fairly small marginal gain, whereas I think what the city could be doing in a non-putative approach, some sort of an assistance, I don't know, how, I, I don't know the form it would take, but that if we could look at the city's use of residential, other kind of building heating in, in a manner similar to what we've done with the district heating, I'm not suggesting using wood as the fuel, but that if, if the city wanted to try to figure out what's the scope of this problem of converting everybody basically to something that's not screwing everything up. And um, then working out the parameters that would be in, involved with that, such as, for example, electricity presumably is gonna, would be a big part of that. I know enough about the uh, electrical system to know that, that uh, if the city were to make a big jump in use of electricity, not just sort of random incremental changes, there'd have to be all kinds of major changes within the grid system and the public service department and board's scope of activity. But that seems to me the kind of thing which the city could really profit in taking action on behalf of the entire town and not going at it piecemeal, one individual home at a time. Thank you. Peter Lux Montpelier. Having the most energy efficient homes is a fantastic idea. My question is, how will the implementation of this influence that behavior? Now, as someone who's been in the market for a house and looking to buy a home, all things being equal, I would buy the most energy efficient home. However, there is almost nothing for sale in Montpelier, so you're lucky to find something you can afford that works for you, right? So as a buyer, knowing that it's more energy efficient is nice, but it's not necessarily going to influence my decisions. As a seller, you know that too, right? So where's the incentive to get a good score? Now, if we could tie it to an incentive structure, for example, around weatherization, where you have some kind of system where everybody could weatherize, and in return, if you have a good score on weatherization, for example, you get a, a little bit of a kickback on your taxes, right? There needs to be an incentive for people to do this, because if there's no incentive and no benefit, then it becomes an exercise in figuring this stuff out, and that's great, but it's not going to make much difference, I think. Um, so with that said, I do think if you have an incentive system, you have to think through, do it in a way that doesn't just benefit the people who have the money to do the weatherization and do all these energy efficient measures. Find a way to roll it out in such a way that everyone can participate. For example, if there's a 0% uh, interest weatherization program and you have a certain amount of time and then at the end of that period then you will kind of score the housing that could be one way to do it but I feel there needs to be a mechanism in the system to make sure that it actually has an impact on the behavior of buyers and sellers my name is Jared Duval uh, I'm a Montpelier resident and I live on Elm Street and I just want to speak to this uh, issue from the perspective of consumer protection and as somebody who couldn't afford not to do energy efficiency work. So I've heard some terms that have been confusing to me uh, this evening in terms of punitive, in terms of burden, and uh, I think genuinely out of a concern for uh, folks with, with less means. And I think that that's a reason that a program well designed in this direction is incredibly important. So let me just pe speak from my personal experience to ground this. So my wife and I moved to Montpelier about five years ago 
for, bought our first house on Elm Street. It was an old 1890 house um, that was incredibly leaky. We moved in in the late, in the early fall, and um, that first winter we used over a thousand gallons of fuel oil to heat the house, and it wrecked our budget on one income with a new baby, um, and you know we ended up in a situation where we we paid almost three thousand dollars in fuel oil bills that first winter. And the problem with our dependence, Vermont uses more fuel oil per capita uh, than any other state in the country except for Maine. And fuel oil and propane are by far the two most expensive and the two most volatilely priced fuels that you can heat your home on. And so when you end up in the middle of winter with a $600, $7 fuel oil bill, that is incredibly difficult for a lot of folks in this town. And so we couldn't afford not to make an efficiency investment. We did a whole house retrofit with Capstone and Barry. We cut our heat loss in half. And because our home became so much more efficient, we were able to switch over to wood pellets. Um, and we have a, a, a complementary heat pump system. So our heating bills went from almost $3,000 a year, a winter, to about, it's been about $1,200 a winter the last four years. That project is going to pay for itself um, in like eight years. So this. I think there's a lot of the framing of this that is backwards. When we invest in efficiency, it's about getting off of the highest cost, most punitive, most um, problematic, both from a pollution perspective and from a family budget perspective. Fuel oil and propane are the worst thing for Vermonters. Uh, and so I think that if we can design this program well to make sure that from a consumer protection perspective, we're giving buyers, first time home buyers especially, the information to know what they could be getting into and make sure that we can make smart investments. The other thing is, you know, from an income perspective, the state has a program called the Heat Saver Loan, which buys down the interest rates on um, energy efficiency and renewable energy projects to as low as a 0% interest rate, depending on your income. So if we can design this in a way that helps make those smart investments that will save money over time, help avoid those huge fuel bills in the middle of winter and make folks more comfortable and also the health and air quality improvements that can be related to energy efficiency and moving off of fuel oil and propane, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here and I think we really need to look at this from a consumer protection and affordability perspective and that's why I support um, what we moving forward in a way uh, that uh, mandates um, and moves forward an energy efficiency agenda for Montpelier. Yes. Yep. So are we running out of time? We Sorry. are starting to run out of time. Um, but I have. I mean, this this has been incredibly valuable. This is super interesting comments. Um, I know uh, Marky had something you wanted to add, and, and Alex it's short. And um, is there anybody else who wanted to speak on this? Yep. Very briefly. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Um, you're done, and then um, and then Alex, and then Martha. Um, can, unless there's anybody else who would like to speak again or for the first time. Okay. I just wanted to offer very briefly a little bit of wider context to this because I think it's important to not lose sight of the the, the 20,000 foot level of why I think the Energy Committee Good and day. communities are coming up with this. Donald Devoyle, a, a resident of Montpelier and formerly a resident of other parts of the world, which is what I wanted to mention. Um, so I've bought three properties in Montpelier now in the 15 years I've been here. One of them from Laurie. Um, all of them did need quite a lot of weatherization work. Um, so I don't, from personal experience, the housing stock here I know isn't really that energy tight. In fact, Americans use twice as much energy as the average Western European. And I think, you know, houses and lack of insulation and housing sizes and all these things factor into why that is the case. So personally, I would really have liked more information about um, energy use and, and, and the overall efficiency of the buildings I bought here. Just very briefly, you can contrast that with my brother, who is in the process of buying his first house in, in England right now. Um, standard, all of the United Kingdom, 
to have the type of report that we are discussing here tonight as part of a, a, a building purchase. I don't know all the details about how they calculate it, but he gets a basic report, it has a score from one to five overall for the building in terms of energy use, and then it has a breakdown of major components, not about how much energy the previous person used, but in terms of major components about whether the, the loft insulation is there, whether the walls are insulated, that type of thing. Um, for him, in terms of making a decision about purchasing the house and what he's going to do in terms of improvements there, I think it's been incredibly useful to him in terms of figuring out where his priorities need to be. So I just want to kind of say that, you know, there are lots and lots of other countries in the world that are doing the kind of thing that's being discussed here nationally and have been doing it for a while. And certainly the word on the street I hear from my family back in the UK is that it seems to be a pretty good system. Thank you. Thank you. Seems like we should find out more <laughs> about that. Um, great. Oh, and, and Alex and Martha? Or if, um, either way, it doesn't matter. Well, that was great for the information. Again, I'd love to see what how they come up with their numbers and that kind of thing because I, I'm not able to wrap my head around this is actually working so I think that's another step is to find out what other people are using to see if that works um, so I think an important thing when I've talked to other some other residents who again didn't understand what was going on it's I think it's important that they know how it was sold to us at our realtor meeting was we want to come up with this program so each house has a number and, and yes I called it a scarlet letter um, but then they, it was said, so you can have buyers who say, I only want to look at houses rated 50 to 75. So, but the thing is that those houses may not actually fit their needs, or they may not be cute and have the character they want. So I don't see it as a factor in how they're going to decide, like the, being that range of properties. I only want to buy one in this range. Um, so again, Buyers do diligence, and they can do an energy audit. They can they can do all of that as well. And I think if we can have a better form of the usage from sellers. I, I think that's I, I do not like the computer generated this this computer generated mm -hmm. idea. So yeah. love to see what other people do. Yeah, cool. That's really helpful. My only comment um, is that I agree with everything that everyone has said, I don't see it as being either or, more of as a both and, because everybody knows that fuel basically is still a hell of a lot cheaper in this country than it is in Europe. So therefore, the incentive to insulate has been far less in this country traditionally than it has been in Europe. I'd much rather live in England just for the healthcare costs alone, but we're not gonna have that discussion tonight. Um, I think that as a realtor, only relatively recently, I see the intense interest in having realtors be the point around which this argument gets thrown. And w w that's not going to happen because there's no incentive for realtors other than to make sure that caveat emptor, which is buyer beware, is put into place. We have so many rules around disclosure already that that would protect consumers. Um, you know that that it 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 doesn't seem to me that the approach of having the seller and the realtor be responsible for doing this energy audit, when it really should be on the buyer, who, as somebody earlier said, is the one living in the property from this point forward. I think over time we will see a natural evolution towards this process. But as, as information, we're in the age of big data. And I'm, I'm sure that the data is already there. We just don't know where to find it or how to look for it, or even more importantly, how to present it so that it is credible and easily available. But I think that will happen naturally given, an, given time, and not too much time either. So. I would encourage us not to look at this as a you do this or else, or as I have this position and if you don't believe in what I'm saying, then you are opposite me and therefore we're in disagreement. I think we are in agreement. I think that energy efficiency is crucially important. I, I think there are people who can't afford to do the things that they really want to do. God bless you, whoever you are, Jared, wherever you went. Uh, for, for having the means 
to fix up these houses and reduce your energy costs. Maybe I think that's the marketing. Have the means not to. It would have well, cost me well, more but, not but to. I think my point is, it's easy for me to market a house that is really badly energy efficient to someone who's interested in finding a fixer upper. Say, boy, do I have a bunch for you, you know? And and I think I th it's just a question of how you, you know, frame the question. We'll get to where we want to be. I just think setting it up as don't do this because it's going to go against my basic principles is not the right way to think about it. I think it can be, let's keep talking, let's let's understand that we can't apply a macro solution to what is essentially a micro problem. Um, which is each house is different, each house's usage is different. So don't lay a huge state law. There's a reason the state law doesn't apply, because you can't do a one approach fits all in this situation. So let the, in that sense, let the market take care of itself, but also have with it in your mind always the goal of achieving efficiency and achieving better housing stock for all Montpelier residents. I would like to know where in this format, because I'm the one homeowner here, one of the few homeowners here, there's a few of us that are not realtors, um, where do I get credit for the last 25 years of doing what an awful lot of Vermonters do, doing plastic over the windows so I don't have the drafts, because I do have a corner of my house that is ungodly drafty. And I haven't yet been able to figure out why. But where do I get the credit for that? I mean, I am opposed to paying the oil companies. I really do not enjoy my paying my, my fuel delivery. It's not fun. So, and I also do not enjoy drafts. I do keep my house cold to some people maybe 64, 65 if I'm not feeling well. Um, because that's where I'm comfortable. But I don't, I'm not comfortable with drafts. So since the day I bought the house 25 years ago, I've been doing all my little plastic on the windows and it does make a difference. But where do those of us that that is what we do for our energy efficiency, and by the way, it does work, um, get credit for that versus spending a few thousand dollars on whatever. I did spend a few thousand dollars on new storm windows, and guess what? It made no difference. Thank you. All right, well, so thank you all. Again, I, I know even just from these comments, this has given me a lot to think about and a lot to chew on, and I am actually really looking forward to digesting these comments, and I'm so appreciative of those of you who've said like, I, you know, I wanna help like involve us in the process, um, that's super valuable. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, hope that we can like follow up um, on, on those um, offerings. So uh, there's more to be, uh, more discussions to be had um, in the future. This is, uh, you know, just sort of a, a really, pr we're really early in the, in the game here, um, trying to figure out where, um, or how this can look or um, what parts of it might entail um, and so anyway your comments are shaping um, what this might look like and I, I'm really um, so grateful that you all were able to come out tonight so thank you all for being here and if you have further comments um, please email me or Kate or Richard um, I know my email is on uh, well I'll say I'll say this you can email me my email is on the city website um, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there Okay, thank you again for, for coming out. And I know that there's another meeting in this room um, later on. Okay, look for more on this later. Further meetings.